Hi Flossive and Instagram friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Contented Needleworker Kim. Today is July 4, 2023 and it is my official 60th birthday today. Thank you to everyone for the wonderful, there were cards and birthday wishes and gifts. I just thank you so much. You guys are all such a blessing. I want to celebrate my birthday with a mid-year whip and finish parade. Let's go ahead and see what I've gotten up to so far this year. So this will be a floss tube extra. Thank you all for joining me. Um, you know, I have such wonderful stitching to share with you again today because these designers, they're just knocking it out of the park again and again. And I'm so thankful for all the beautiful linens and flosses that we have to play with. And we put them all together, just follow a chart and come out with this beautiful artwork. So I'm just, I'm absolutely loving this hobby. Okay, so we're going to do some stitching statistics really quickly before we begin. I just want to say again, I am so sorry. I know that there seem to be a plethora of ads on my channel. And again, that is not anything I'm doing. That is YouTube. I have considered trying to figure out how to monetize. It wasn't something that I was interested in. Um, but I think I can control the number of ads that you will see if I monetize. So hopefully I'll be able to um, figure that out and, and it'll reduce the number of ads that you guys see. Again, I'm so sorry for that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our stitching statistics. So I came into 2023 with 35 whips. That's how I started January 1st. And a lot of that was due to the NYE 12 by 12, which happens on December 31st. And I think I only started maybe eight or nine but I did add to my list from there. I, I believe there are only two whips that I will be sharing with you that are prior to 2022, when I came into January. I think I only had two that were prior to 2022. One of them is probably as old as 2019. I don't think that's going to happen again. When we go into 2024, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have quite a few that are going to be uh, from prior to 20. There'll be, there'll be a lot more because they're larger and I'm just not going to finish as much, which is going to be okay. Um, okay, so I had 35 whips on January 1st and then I started 34 new starts so far this year but I also had 28 finishes so far this year. Not all of them are large, but I did count every single one. So that puts me right now currently at 41 whips. So we will have 41 whips to look at. And I think I managed to get all of my finishes together. There will be 28 finishes. You can see a lot of them just around me on the wall. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got my pile here right in front of me and hopefully I can manage to juggle everything and there won't be any avalanches, but we'll see. So we're, we're going to kind of start, I listed them in my uh, book of days in alphabetical order. Let me show you. I have my book of days and I started out the first of the year with a list of every whip that I had coming in. And then I did my NYE starts and then I had my finishes. I had to start getting creative. So let's go ahead and start in alphabetical order, I think for the most part with what I came into the year with. So the first one up is A Tender Father by 1897 Schoolhouse Samplers. And this is on 40 count, I always have to look, I always double check, up in the attic, 40 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. And I am using the called for over dies, as of right now anyway. So you will see almost everything I will share with you is 40 count. There may be some 36 and I always stitch on 40 and 36 with one strand of floss over two linen threads. So that's going to be a consistent through the whole thing. And I will tell you the fabric if I remember it. Some I may not have recorded accurately and uh, I might not be able to tell you, but that's all right. I'm sure you have a wonderful substitution. Okay, third song. This is one that has come in from the prior year than just uh, 2023 by um, Samplers Not Forgotten. I love it. I, I think part of the reason why it doesn't get a lot of progress is because it's a lot of this, um, the leaves and the border stitching is not the most enjoyable for me. Um, and so, and I just started so many things that it was just hard to keep up with everything. But I, I still, I don't think there's anything that I'm not going to want to stitch or UFO in any way. So I believe this is 40 count exemplar um, by linen, uh, Lakeside Linens and the called for overdides. There's a better color. I really love this color. It'll be 
exemplar or vintage exemplar? Might be vintage exemplar, but not light exemplar. Okay, then we've got, I found my, um, found my cover sheet for Charity for All by Erica Michaels. And I'm using one floss color. I don't think it was the called for though. Um, it's just a dark black, gray black. I can't remember which one it is right now. Okay, so let's show you this one. I showed you this recently. There's not been any more progress on it. And 40 count weeks gray, but it is the old base of weeks, which means it is not a, a Zweigart. Yeah, that's just my zigzagging on the side. So it's not Zweigart. It's a little bit more loose. It's not, it's not my favorite linen to stitch on. But I did actually choose it because I liked the, it was going to look more antique -y, you know, looser, a little more just vintage, raggedy. <laughs> So I did, I did choose that fabric on purpose. Plus I love uh, Weeks Gray as a color. Um, okay, so Charlotte Rice by Thames Path Samplers. You can uh, get this on Etsy. I do plan on, I, I, what is stalling me out on this one is the decisions. I need to decide exactly what I'm stitching. I didn't plan on stitching the whole thing, but I'm gonna have to chart something here which bands, I, I just couldn't make decisions. And so that, that will really stall me on a project when I do have to make, when I decide that I want to make changes. I don't have to make changes. It's a beautiful sampler and stitching it just as it is. It would be absolutely beautiful. Um, let me see, 40 count baked clay by Fox and Rabbit, I'm pretty sure, with the called for DMC colors. It's a lot more pink and green than I anticipated. The cover looked more red and brown. Um, I don't mind pink and green, so that works for me, but that was a bit, I guess, when I pulled the flosses, I should have noticed. I'm sure I did, but um, sometimes my brain doesn't always connect. I'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in another situation, but I'm trying to be a little more careful when I kit something up and I think about it, not just pulling the call for, but really deciding like, do I want the floss to be variegated? That's really the biggest question is, do I want the floss to be variegated? And if it's not the color that I think it's going to be, stop and think about, you know, do you want to change the color? Oh, I meant to pull the flosses for this. Someone asked me um, the colors that I was using, the flosses that I was using on this Christian Guy Singer by Victorian Rose Needle Arts. And I remembered a couple of them, but I also changed one of the greens to a silk. I did do that. And I, uh, I meant to get back to you. I'm sorry. I It was on Instagram, um, and I'm sorry that I, I forgot to do that. I wonder if I can pull that. Do you mind if I pop out of thing for a minute? Because it's right, it should be right here. Let's see. I've got my bags over here, and my flosses. Let me prevent that avalanche. Hold on. My flosses should be in here. Find the zip. Okay, good. Now I can show you. All right. So I am using Summer Shower. I'm using walnut. I am using, oh, I can't remember what I changed the white to because it's not silk. It's probably just oatmeal by Gast. Um, avocado by Gast. Barn gray. Faded rose. Forest glade. Nutmeg, that was a substitution. Uh, schoolhouse Red, which was called for, but I'm not using the um, wools. Attic Tea, that's the floss that I changed one of the uh, the greens to. And I think that is everybody. Oh, and soot, soot. So thank you for letting me take the time to share those because I know that was, um, I've showed it many a time and um, I've often said that I'm, you know, Anyway, those are the flosses that I'm using. And the count of, or the color fabric on that is um, 40 count chai by Seraphim Fabrics. But again, chai does not always come out to be this color. So here we are. Let me move some of my working threads out of the way. Here we are with Christian. Let's see if you can get the fabric. There we go, it's a little more pink there. All right, Christian Geisinger. Next, I don't have a color photo of this because this is coming from the, again, I can reach. Oh, you think you get everything ready for a video. Oh, this comes from this CD. And it is, 
from the number 63 summer 2011 issue of Sampler's Antique Needlework Quarterly if you'd like to get the magazine in paper copy. So EF 1864 EF Sampler. And I always say I believe this is American Chestnut by R&R. Very tight on my borders, but I will just use the extra fabric when it comes time to frame. Using the called for DMC colors. If every once in a while something didn't look quite right, I would change it. I think there was more of a blue color for the grass around that little deer, and I do think I changed to that. So it wasn't as blue. Okay. Let's see. We're still we're still on what I came into the year with. This is going to be one. This is the one that's from like 2019, I think. Um, Friends of the Heart by Plum Street Samplers. It's not that I don't love it. It's that there's not a lot of stitching on here that I actually enjoy. I've noticed, you know, some of the fill in of the repetitiveness of the flowers, the uh, vines of the leaves. I'd love to stitch the stag. That would be fun. And the colors. Um, autumn colors while I love them in autumn uh, they're and they're my husband's favorite colors they are not my favorite colors so this is adorable it's this 36 or 40 count ren by picture this plus it's adorable um, and I will <laughs> enjoy it when it's completed at some point but I find that I will really only stitch on this in the fall and that's going to be the same with a lot of my fall projects I will show you is that I won't pull them out other than the fall and when I was stitching some of these more seasonal, this is when I was back stitching a lot of seasonal, a lot of Plum Street and uh, Brenda Gervais and et cetera. But I have fallen down to stitching far more samplers now, things that I feel I um, want to keep out on my wall all year. I keep a lot of my seasonal out um, as well, but it just kind of my, my, I just changed the things that I stitch. Uh, I just shifted a little bit. And so I know that's why this isn't gonna get as much work either. Now, I do not have the cover sheet for this. I'm sorry, this is a sampler by my friend Shelly. It's only stitching. It is a free sampler that you can get from her, her linked tree. She's um, Key X Stitch on Instagram. And it's the IMK sampler, I believe. There's going to be a fun lion in the middle there and uh, a lot of fun quirky motifs so I'm not I'm gonna have to get the cover sheet printed out for this I know I made a, a I didn't make a very good selection on my colors down there I may have to pull those out and darken them up and I don't even know that I can tell you for sure what this fabric is I think it's color and cotton oatmeal but I'm really not 100% on that so this is going to be a fun sampler again it's there's no reason I'm not working on it other than I just can't get to everything all right, um, harvest time. This is the other one that is a fall uh, color scheme. I started it last fall, and this is Victoria House Designs available on Etsy. I started it last fall, and I, I did some other fall stitching that I did complete, but this one just didn't quite get finished. I do not know the fabric that I'm stitching this on. I think it was just a scrap piece that I had. Um, so this will get finished easily when I think August, I will pull out some fall stitching and get a finish on this. I think I'm using some of her colors and then I, I changed up the pumpkin to be a variegated floss. I really wish I hadn't. I love her color. She's just, I think this is all just started just in DMCs and um, I'm not so sure I'm crazy about the stripey of the pumpkin, but I'm not going to change it. So this is going to be really cute. And I will have an, I have a lot of um, fall stitching already. Um, so I guess part of me says I don't really need to worry about having decor, you know, stitching to have decor out because I do have a lot of stitching out. This is from summer school of last year. I absolutely love it. I don't know when it'll be available. Uh, I would think soon since it's been about a year. Isn't that just so, so pretty with all those beautiful colors in there, the pinks. Um, I only got a small start and I just haven't gotten back to her. Part, I, part of it, I think, is because I know you can't stitch it yet and that it will be released. And so maybe I'll just hold off and start stitching it when a lot of you can stitch it. Um, so Jane Eleanor Lee by Samplers Remembered. Hmm. I don't know what this fabric is. I just don't. It's beautiful. It's very pinky brown. I don't know that it's chai. I really couldn't tell you if this was an, or a piece of um, prairie grass by Seraphim, which I got a piece that was very pink because prairie grass is not always pink either. So 
that's my stitching. She did provide uh, linen with the, um, the kit from summer school and I chose not to use the linen that she had just because I thought this was really pretty with all the pinks. So, and I have a large piece left over because I have not decided how much of this I'm stitching as of yet. And I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm stitching more of the samplers now. I'm deciding that um, even if it takes me several years because I want to stitch the border, if I want to stitch the border, I'll take the time. I'll take the extra years. There's no rush. Okay, another Victoria House Designs, The Keys to Happiness, and another one that I feel that I will pull out in August because I just, I love these colors, but they're more the golds, the deeper um, golds and browns. They're more autumnal to me. So I really am looking forward to getting back to this. This is Lakeside Linens and it's the, I know it. Oh, I'm drawing a blank, but I do know what it is. That's gonna bother me. Autumn Gold, Vintage Autumn Gold. That's what it is, Vintage Autumn Gold. And I changed, she has it charted in DMCs, but I changed it to um, silks. I think they're mostly Gloriana. So Technigold and maybe Wooly Bear. I don't know, they're, they're beautiful though. So this is going to be real. And I'm gonna change it to scripture. I have a lot, there are Lion of Judah, you know, Daniel and the Lion's Den, there are options. So we shall see. Okay, now we've got my Reflet de Soie. Louisa Barney, part of the Reflet de Soie SAL. And uh, stitching this with my friend Barbara, Nevada Stitcher. And a lot of you, a lot of you are joining us, specifically on Louisa, but also on any Reflet de Soie. So that's been a lot of fun. I have to say that um, I, I put a bunch in my wish list <laughs> to see with some of my gift cards to see whether I was going to pop another Reflet de Soie in there or not because I'm so in love with so many of them. This is 36 count vintage cedar plank by Lakeside Linens and I am using the called for DMCs. All right, let me fold her back up. She's a big girl. One that, again, I have come to give myself the, give myself permission to take as many years as it takes to stitch some of these larger projects because there just doesn't need to be a rush. I have plenty on my walls already. All right, another summer school project, Margaret Campbell. Again, I got an immediate start on this by uh, Needle, Made, Needle Made Designs. I got an immediate start on this right after summer school because I just love it. I love that blue roof and the burgundy red house. I, I everything, I, I'm stitching this whole thing. I don't know about the border. But I then I put it away um, because, again, a lot of other things just came. And I've been, I keep trying to pull it back out, keep trying to pull it back out. And um, I'm going to just, I think I'm going to struggle with the constant distractions of all the things I want to stitch all at the same time. This is Vintage Meadow Rue by Lakeside Linens. It is one of my favorite colors. It looks a lot like the exemplar that I shared with you earlier, or the vintage exemplar. But that roof is, um, I think it's Chester's blue. Oh, it's so pretty. I can't, I can't remember for sure. It's been a while since I've, uh, since I've stitched it. Cause I, I don't know that I'm using silks or the, the, um, cottons. I don't, when I stitch on it again, I'll, it'll all come back to me and we'll, we'll talk more about it then. But I love this one. And like I said, I keep trying to pull it out and then I, something else just keeps having to jump in front of it for whatever reason. Okay, where is my, oh, I don't have the cover. This is one of the Blackbird Designs books. Uh, I think it's, is it in the Winds of Autumn? Oh, I can't remember, but it's in one of the Blackbird books for fall, all the fall designs. And it's Mighty Acorn. I am stitching this with my friend Darlene Dion from um, Darlene Dion Design. She's here on FlossTube and Instagram. Quilter, bag maker. She uh, has uh, cross-stitch charts, quilt patterns, the whole thing. So we started this together. This is uh, Salted uh, Caramel or Caramel by Misty Luminous Fiber Arts. This is the linen, absolutely beautiful. Love this color. Perfect for fall stitching in my mind. And I think I'm using all the call for colors on this so far. So uh, again, August, there will be some fall stitching for me in August. It has to be before September. 
think it's September, a sampler September or September sampler soiree. <laughs> All right, Quaker Garden by Blackbird Designs. This is not in print as of right now. I don't. I thought they were going to re-release it, but so far not yet. Um, Blackbird Designs Quaker Garden on its putty by Weeks. I don't know if it's thirty six or forty. And I got. And I'm using the call for colors. Just got a small start. I have to fix my my little. These are hard motifs for me to stitch. I have to be very careful. And obviously, I made the mistake on. That little bottom thing, the one little uh, stitch at the bottom of the star. But I got a good start on this and then um, just haven't gotten back to it. So let's see, are we still, I better check my book and see when we get to the end of 2023. No, no, we're still in the beginning. Yep, there's still, okay, still, we got still quite a few more to go. <laughs> All right, sing on rejoicing from the heart, uh, needle art by Wendy. Picked this up from the attic when I was at summer school. I, I think I have a good frame that's going to work for this really well. Um, Vintage Pecan Butter by Lakeside Linens, 40 count. And I'm using some of the Call for Overdyes, and I substituted some DMC uh, flosses when I didn't have the overdye. So uh, I, the frame I have will require me to put a little bit, it's a little bit longer. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit somewhere to have it fit in the frame. All right. Then we've got Tweet Tweet by Quaint Rose Needle Arts. A very fun, colorful, uh, beautiful bird. And I plan on, I really like this lacy uh, effect here from stitching around the fabric. So I really plan on stitching this whole thing. I just, again, this one just keeps calling to me and I just can't quite get back to it again because it's fun. These are beautiful colors. I like stitching with these colors. All right. I, Tundra, Vintage Tundra? It was, I'd had it in my stash for a long time. It's a really good kind of a gray, purpley color. And DMC. Uh, DMC's called for, so. Trying to see if I can get, there we go. That's a pretty good rendition of the color. Such a fun bird. Uh, Macy, again, you can get her charts either in paper copy at some of your local needlework stores. I know the attic carries a lot by her, um, as well as she has uh, an Etsy store and a lot of beautiful designs. If I could stitch more of them, I, if I had more time, I would. But I'm trying to, it's like, let's maybe finish some of the things that I have. Um, okay, Vintage Flowers 2, right, by Jeanette Douglas. Mm, is this on beads, knees? I don't remember what the fabric is for this one. Love me a Jeanette Douglas. I don't think I have the thing on there. And I just got to start all the, um, the called for um, over uh, fancy floss over dyeds. No reason I haven't gotten back to this one either. Okay, then we had a Christmas Day start, and this is Margaret uh, Beatty, or Beatty, by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I'm still on the fence. I have not decided whether I'm stitching just the bottom portion. The reason I keep hesitating is because this is just so fun. I love all these uh, fun colors up here, and I. I don't know. I'm tempted to just tell myself, stitch the whole thing. I have enough fabric to stitch the whole thing. So when we get there, I will decide. This is a legacy uh, linen by Access Commodities. And it may be, oh, I have a lit, I think I was going to say, it is, it's corn tassel, 37 count corn tassel by Legacy Linen with the DMCs. And I think I substituted some Madeira flosses just because I had them and I thought it would be fun to, uh, to use them. I want to get to that little girl. And I think once I pull her back out again, I will I will be uh I will not want to put her away until I stitch that little girl. She's so sweet. All right, my next refle de soie is Antoinette Carrera. And uh the beautiful bird of paradise here in the middle. I'm going to move down because I really want to get to this um flower. Flowers right there start stitching with those pinks and so pretty. 
Um, let's see. Again, Lakeside Linens. I know the color. Vintage Navy Bean. 40 count. And so far, I've just managed to stitch the bird. I am uh, anxious to see how far down I have once I stitch the flowers, how much more room I have left on my fabric. She's a another big, it's a big girl, it's a big piece of fabric. I don't usually like to fold my things, but uh, sometimes wrangling these, keeping them. So uh, I just, if I could lay them all nice and flat, that would be my preference. Some of them are just too big. All right, BR's Moth by Kathy Varick. I really loved this one. It came out at market. Um, the challenge is it's a little harder for me to stitch on the Havana and the colors again. They're not my, particularly my colors. I did make some subs to, again, Madeira Flosses. I've been using the DMCs. Uh, Amy Loves Toads. I asked her to stitch this with me. and She's probably gonna have a finish pretty soon and I have totally stalled out. This is another one I keep telling myself, some of these, um, this, this color scheme, I'm gonna pull out in the month of August and see if I can't get some progress. I like stitching it. It's actually the kind of stitching I enjoy, but they're just not my favorite colors. And that is going to hold me up. Although I, I will love having this on the wall. So I wanna, all right, oh, I'm having a moment here. Whew. Let's see, Cross Stitch Antiques, Antique Sampler Reproduction by Cross Stitch Antiques in memory of Louise, 1874. This came from the uh, sampler box that Kitten Stitcher put out. I don't know if you can get this. I thought I saw this on Kitten Stitcher's website. Maybe she's selling some of the things individually from the boxes. This, this is on Bee's Knees. This is the one I know I was thinking was on Bee's Knees. So that other one, I'm not sure what it was. And just the DMCs that are called for. Again, really enjoy these kinds of borders much more for me than um, just the straight vine type stitches. I want to get down to the cat that's in the bottom there. I'm going to finish the swan. That deer is just adorable. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, Margaret Doyle, 1850. This was an exclusive to uh, Kitten Stitcher. This is by Has, but it's an exclusive to Kitten Stitcher. And I don't know if she still has, she didn't have the chart only anymore, but she did have some where if you bought it as um, a package with the silks and maybe the linen, I'm not sure. This is paper bark. I'm pretty sure it might be Eureka. I think it's paper bark by Fox and Rabbit with the call for DMC threads. Again, want to work my way over to start stitching the little girl. Really beautiful colors. You can tell I'm stitching the border. Plana, I'm stitching the whole thing on this one. I just love those colors. Okay, Noelle Sampler by uh, With Thy Needle or it's actually just says designed by Brenda Gervais on this one. Um, I wanted to stitch this for a really long time and I finally got started on it, but I'm only going to stitch to here. I won't be stitching the bottom and I will be changing the alphabets here to say something, scripture or um, a verse, it'll say something here. So this is 40 count vintage cedar plank by Lakeside Linens with the DMCs. I think it's charted in DMC. This is a really pretty color of linen. And I'm making it, it's tight. I'm making a, I'm making, it's, it's gonna be not a lot of margin, but that's okay. So obviously that'll get pulled out for Christmas stitching. Okay. Matt, I think, let me check because I think we've gotten to the end of the 23. I'm gonna have to start consulting my book. Okay, Noelle, then I had, oh, then I had some finishes that some of the other starts were finishes. So Strawberry Fair was a start that I now have fully finished. And let's see what else. Summer Bliss. Now Summer Bliss, I believe is that one right there, right here. And so that got finished. 
and Eleanor Parr is over here. That's the one right here. It's by, um, oh, and Summer Bliss is um, Cottage Garden Samplings. And the fair is October House Fiber Arts, I think it is. And then this is by uh, the Scarlet Letter, Eleanor Parr. These are obviously all things that I have showed you on my prior videos. Um, okay, so then a new start. That's it. That's everybody that came into the year. And then those are the couple of finishes. The new start that is also a finish for January was Yield Noel. So this is one of my starts. And I have to just kind of figure out what I want to do for a frame. This is on uh, Brea by Needle and Flax. 40 count. Um, let's see who else we got. Ellen, okay, another start for January was my Ellen Harrison on Ale by Picture This Plus. I think it's 36 count. And this is um, Needlework Press. So let me see, I should have the cover for that here to share with you. This is what Ellen's going to look like. I'm stitching this with, um, no, Diane, the woodpecker's daughter finished it. Amy and I are supposed to be finishing, stitching this as well. So there we go, Needlework Press. Um, then I had another large start in January of Mary Carr, also by Needlework Press. And this is being stitched on 46 count white clay by Fox and Rabbit. Now this is the one I wanted to talk about in the way of, do I want my flosses to be variegated? Now this is um, charted for uh, Classic Color Works or DMC or Averisois. And this was stitched in the Averisois. Now you'll notice the Averisois is not variegated. And I should, this is where I, I should have stopped and thought about, I don't want my grass to be variegated because I want it to look like this. These are different colors that she uses in here. And I used the classic color works um, that was called for, I think all, all of the classic color works for the conversion, but that is a variegated overdyed. And so my grass is going to be variegated. And this is where I need to stop and think about whether I could have used the DMC. I don't want my grass to be variegated. I didn't need to use the overdyed cotton because you'll see that there's some variegation in there. I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't decided. Um, here's Mary Carr. She's another very large stitch. I'm not sure whether I will pull out the little section that I started. This is 46 count. That's not going to be easy. It's not, it's not that large of an area. Um, or whether I will just move forward, use the DMC and see, you know, what I wanna do. I haven't decided, but it's one of those things where I need to stop and think about what is it that I want the finished product to look like before I make some of my choices. And, and somehow, sometimes I just don't actually always do that. All right, let's see what else we got. I'm sorry for looking down here. Anniversaries. This is a Blackbird Designs, and this was a finish that I had in um, the month of January. As well as uh, Clements Janou. Now let's see if I can move. So this is Clements Janou right here, and this is by Color Tutois. Am I saying that right? <laughs> I don't speak French. I wish my friend Elaine from Ellie Willie Stitcher, I should just record her and then play her back saying it because her French is perfect. <laughs> so that was a finish. I'm sorry, that was a start. I'm giving you finishes and I meant to give you a start. This was a start. And um, the finishes for January, um, Love and Joy. This was part of a sale I did. This is by Heartstring Samplery. Yes, you cannot see it. I stitched it. I didn't, I, you could, I dyed it. It's fine. It's for me, it's fine but this has been done much more beautifully many, many times by many of you. So that was a finish. Love and Joy was a finish. Phoebe J. Mead is another finish that I had in the month of January. That is another needlework press, and I stitched that on perforated paper. Let me say that slower. Phoebe J. Mead. I had a couple people ask me what that was the last time. So that was a finish in January, as well as Matilda's Drum, now you can barely see it. It's in this little shadow box here and it's right there. And I only stitched, it was meant to be a drum. I obviously only stitched the little flower portion of it, made it into a pillow and put it in this little um, shadow box that I have. So that was a finish. And then um, this was just a start in January, but not an actual finish. Okay, 
I don't know how much you care about all the statistics, but that's where we're at so far with January. Let's move on to February and we'll go and do my new starts for February. So I had the first one is a study in pink by the artsy housewife, my friend Gigi. You can find her uh, charts available on her on Etsy, but I think she's also starting to sell the paper charts here as well. So look for those. Um, I really love this and I, I do like stitching with these colors on this butterfly. So I will get back to this here hopefully soon. Let's see which one's the front. Here we go. I hope this is right side up. It's hard for me to tell till I pull it out again, but I think it is. And this is 36 count dark cobblestone by Zweigart. It's just one of their um, regular fabrics that they offer. It is not over dyed. And it's a, I really like this color and uh, it's easy to stitch on. So that's a very affordable option. Okay, then we had Starry Night Sampler by The City Stitcher. And I do not, let me see if I wrote in here what fabric I am using for this one. Starry Night is on 40 count light mocha. And that is again, uh, a Zweigart fabric that if I remember, I think I over dyed this a little bit. Um, I might've stuck it in some wet dye. I can't be for sure, but here's where I've gotten to on Starry Night Sampler. And I'm using DMCs and Madeira flosses. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the one that I over dyed a little bit. Okay, so then my next new star, oh, Pretty Polly. This is the freebie by Hats, Hands Across the Sea Samplers. So I do not have the cover page of this um, printed out. I don't think anywhere, but I only got a very small start. This is Earth by Fiber on a Whim. And I just got, I, I literally just, I remember when this came out and I just wanted to get some stitches in and pulled the flosses and that was about it. That's all I had time for. So Pretty Polly, or no, is yeah, it's called Pretty Polly. Then I had the Eliza Hills Sampler, which is by Handwork Samplers. I got this from the attic. And Jean stitched it on a darker, a beautiful darker fabric, if I remember right. Um, I may have seen that on Instagram, somebody stitched it that way. But I'm stitching it on, again, a 40 count vintage Meadow Rue, one of my favorite fabrics. And I don't know what I'm using in the way of flosses. If I'm using silks or the cottons, it'll, I'll have to pull this back out again at the time I stitch it and, and let you know more there. So pretty. All right, then we had Margaret Lily by um, The Scarlet House. And I think this is going to be 40 count antique lace. I am changing up some of the colors on this um, using some silks that I have and as I go on I'm just making some color changes. I think these are um, regular over dyed cottons but they're not the called for colors either. Sand and I don't remember the other one. Just filling in that house whenever I'm on a zoom call this is a good one to pull out and just keep stitching more of the house. So. Yep, Antique Lace by Seraphim Fabrics. Um, then I have, okay, then we have some finishes. I have Susan's Little Sampler, which is right here from the Heart Needle Art. I showed you that one recently. So that was a start for the month of February, but I have finished that as of now. And Bedelia Bunny was another start back here, and she's actually a finish as well. You can't see her very well back there. That's by the Artsy Housewife. And Adam and Eve Sampler which I know hung up right here. <laughs> Adam and Eve by The City Stitcher was another start for the month of January that I have since finished. And so then finishes. Okay, so that was Anniversaries of the Heart. I finished this in the month of February as well as Ursilia Sampler right here. So she was a finish. When did I, I didn't tell you that I started her. So she must have been something that I started. Did I not come in? To the year. Yeah, I must have missed talking about her. Um, Ursilia Sampler was a one that I came into the year with as a from the prior year. And then Among the Roses by Mojo Stitches. That's another one that I came into the year with, already started and finished up in February. That is by Mojo Stitches on Ale. 
36 count ale by Pitch of This Plus with the called for. I believe I used the called for colors on that, um, the over dyes. And I might have switched to some cottons here and there. But then we had Sarah Barnes right here is another finish. I, uh, she was also a start or something I came into the year with. So I finished her in the month of February. And that is from the sampler box as well from Kitten Stitcher. And that is by the Scarlet House. You'll be able to get that one soon, I'm sure. And let's see, Among the Roses, Sarah Barnes, and then Clements. I finished Clements in the month. All right, so that's February. Then we go on to March. So March was Gathering Stitches was a start. This is by Luminous Fiber Arts, my friend Misty Purcell. And so this is now a finish. And Madeline Deleste was a start. You can see her right up here. She was a start in the month of March. And that is by my friend Amy, Mrs. Flossie. So Madeline Deleste. I got a start on Beloved. I love this one. And I keep saying when I have like three days in a row where I can just stitch and concentrate because I don't want to get started and then get lost. I'm really ready to pull this one back out again. So Beloved by Running with Needles and Scissors, Sylvia. And I am stitching this again on antique lace and I am using the called for colors from the chart and I am stitching the whole thing. There is a beautiful finish of this um, on Instagram where uh, the stitcher did just the center portion on a beautiful, like a blue green fabric. It is stunning. If I can hunt it down, uh, I will, and get permission, I will share it as Instagram inspiration on my next video because it's just gorgeous. So next is the other bird up at the top when I get, and I get enough days to pull her back out again. All right, let's see who else. Oh, and then I had a little uh, start and finish on Barbary Row Designs, and I just did the little, um, you know, needle pin peep thing. And I have this in my little jewelry box. I have one of them here, but I have another one that I actually use out in the other room. And I put that in there for, for decoration because I love it. So let's see, summer finishes. Uh, I'm sorry, March finishes. So summer bliss was a finish. So that's the one right there. Strawberry Fair, I already showed you. I already showed you everybody. So that's all the finishes that I had for March. Now we go into April and we've got Jane Stanwix. Let me see, I have to pull her out a little bit. I was working on her just the last couple of days trying to get a finish on Jane, but I haven't quite been able to get there. So let me find my cover for Jane Stanwix. She will be a finish soon. Um, I'm going to have to make some decisions because I love this little blue border here. I was only planning on stitching to the top of the bushes um, and the vase, but I, I want to add this pink and I want to add the blue. So I'll probably add something right here instead of her name. And I think I'm going to add the border just because I love the color, the pop of blue. It's so pretty. So she's close to a finish, and I'm st uh, my friend Renee, uh, Prairie Stitcher 515, she has already got a finish on her. I shared her with you already. Um, I can't tell you a lot about this. I'm changing a lot of the flosses as I go, and I don't remember the, the fabric. It was just a scrap that I didn't have a, a label on. Um, I'm just making a lot of color changes. She's, so, she's coming out really, really pretty, though. I, I think um, I'm very happy with the, the changes that I've made, so... Jane Stanwyck's got to start at the Quilter Station Retreat, where I got to meet my friend Renee in person for the first time. All right, then Eliza's French Birds was a start. Where is she? She's right. Oh, here we go. She's right over here. So she's since been a finish. And Lex, we've got Red Work Pears. That was a start, and now that's a finish. My Red Work Pears. This is by um, Annie B's Folk Art. This is JBW Designs is the uh, Eliza's French Birds. So I made a pair. That was fun. And let's see. Then we got to start on Middle Mist Red. So let's see where she went. Here we go. By Sassy Jack, Sassafras Samplers. I got this in the PDF download from Sassy Jacks. I've talked a lot about this because this has been one I've been really working on a lot. It's one of my 6 for 60 birthday starts in the DMCs called for, but just moving them all around on this beautiful color and cotton fabric um, aged paper. You can see the 36 or 40, I have, I have two pieces. 
So I wasn't sure what I wanted. I'd never stitched on coloring cotton that I remembered, and so I wasn't sure which one I would prefer. So Middle Mist Red. And there's one I'm going to throw in here because I forgot to write it down. I have a very small start. I do not know when I started Lucy Owen by the Scarlet House, but I know she is one of my whips. And for some reason, she did not get put in my book of days, which is very unusual because I write in my book of days at the end of every day <laughs> what I stitched on. So it must not have been by me in order to be able to do that. But here's my small start on Lucy Owen. I changed the color. Uh, I'm not sure... I'm not sure about that. Um, it called for gray, Weeks Gray. And this is Honey, or it's that Legacy Linens, Wild Honey, I think this is, by Legacy Linens. And so I should have changed the some of the colors. I don't think that this green uh, is going to work on here as well, but I haven't decided. I'm just going to keep moving forward, making some color changes as I go, and then I'll decide whether that green is going to bother me or not. So I'm not sure I have to, if I wanted to find out when I started Lucy, I'd have to go back and watch videos because I know I showed her and I don't think I want to do that. So I'll just not know for sure. All right, another uh, Lucy Calcut, just stitching along. She's another one of my six for 60 birthday starts. Pretty sure I've almost lost track of which ones I chose. Um, love, she's so pretty. Now there is a um, an abbreviated version available through, um, just stitching along now where I think it's just this bottom portion and I wouldn't have wanted to do that because I love the so much more of the rest of this so I'm planning on stitching the whole thing except for I'm not sure about this bottom border and in the side border and somebody just had a finish on this and I'm so sorry I'm not going to remember the name of your floss tube I can see you but I can't remember the name of your floss tube she started it with um tiger lily and so I'm sure you'll hear you'll hear tiger lily um talk about the other woman that she was stitching it with. I feel terrible, I should have written that down. But she has a beautiful finish on it. Maybe you've seen it. All right, then we've got another very tiny finish. Like I told you though, they all counted. This was my Quilter Station perforated paper piece that was given to us by Needlework Press. And so this was just a little memory for that particular lovely retreat. And that was, so that's a start and a finish. And so I think by now I've showed all, uh, oh, then I had my finish of, this was a start and a finish. I did one of these this month and one of them the next month. So this is my friend Merritt Crawford, the Just Because Buzz, and she has, um, does, these designs are available. You can search her, watch her video, find out. You can get a paper copy or you can get a PDF. And then I'll just show you the other one while I have it here. Um, and I'm going to try to make a little um, needle book out of the two of these. I've got my comic book board now so that it's thin. I can try to do what uh, Judy at JBW always does. It's just a matter of getting um, time to do that. So okay, so those were all the starts and some finishes from the month of April. Now we're into May and I had a start and obviously now there's been a finish. I think I finished her in the same month on Susanna Eccles, which is up here. That's by Mama Loves UGV. Um, I also had a start and a finish on ES's floral motif. I didn't finish it this month, but I started ES's floral motif sampler right here, which is uh, by Ellen Chester with my needle. Um, I just showed that recently. So that was started as well as I showed you the Merritt Crawford. So the finishes, I had Mary Ellen Turner, which is right here. She was another one that I came into the year with already started. And that's by Fox and Rabbit, Mary Ellen Turner. Hunter Gatherer, which is right here by Rosewood Manor, was another one I came into the year with already, and that got finished. And let's see, Eleanor Parr, Adam and Eve, and Carrie. So we've already talked about all the others. So there we go. Then we're going to move into June. So June, I started by Mrs. Flossie, my friend Amy. This is AM1819. Oh, I should have the cover sheet for this. AM19 Sampler by Mrs. Flossie. You can see that I'm almost finished with this one. I was trying to go for a finish on uh, Jane Stanwix, and then I think this will be the next one. I do have a couple that will get finished, um, some smaller ones, and then as you've noticed, the majority of them that I'm showing you are a lot larger. So there was a start on that one, and I also got my, this is a start and a finish from the Bristol Retreat, so that's a very tiny one, but that was the finish. And let's see what's next. My mini um, perforated paper portfolio, also from Bristol 3. 
And so this is a start. Let's see, where did you go? Oh, oh, I didn't show you Lucy. I showed you the cover for Lucy, but I forgot to show you the stitching for Lucy. Uh, 46 count white clay by Fox and Rabbit. And this is Miss Lucy Calicut. My kind of stitching. Really, really enjoy this kind of stitching. All right, sorry, Lucy. I didn't mean to forget you. So here is the mini perforated paper. And this is the one where I have all the wackadoodle fabric. <laughs> but I stitched that onto the side so I can put it in my Q-snap and do the two-handed stitching. Using the, I think she gave us the, the flosses to use for this, so I'm using all the call for. And we're almost done. Um, then we've got my start also from the Bristol uh, Sampler Retreat. We were given this one, Mrs. Julia D. Brown's Portfolio. And I'm starting with this one. Yes, I would like to stitch this one at some point, but I'm really going to just focus on this one for now. Perforated paper, 18 count, very large sheet that was provided. And um, I writ dyed with a mister. I talked all about that just in the very last video. So here is how far I've gotten. And I'm using a mix of DMCs as well as some of the um, cotton over dyes. So I got, this is the edge, and then I'm going to work my way over to the other edge here. Really enjoy stitching on this. You know, 18 count perforated paper is very easy to see, and because I have it in my Q-snap on my Lowry, I can do the two-handed stitching, which I enjoy, and for me goes a lot faster. So I, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying that project. I, I don't think that'll get, I think I'll continue to pull that out here and there quite easily. Then we've got, oh my gosh, this was, I... I love this stitching. I the, Everything about this, I was just really, really enjoying this. Fox and Rabbit, um, Margaret Ligertwood, 1765. Got this from the attic. This is actually a gift. Um, oh my gosh. The colors, I just love stitching this. And I'm stitching it upside down <laughs> because I needed to make it more comfortable for me. It's kind of large with some of the called for and am I making some DMC and some of the over dyed, I believe. It wasn't that long ago. Oh, I had to make, that's what it was. I had to make some substitutions. I didn't have the over dyes on some of them. And so I just switched them out to other over dyes or a DMC conversion or a silk, whatever it is I had. And this is Marbled Pointer by XG Designs, 40 count Marbled Pointer. Just easy. Love this fabric. I've, been, I've had this color for a while. I think I got it from, oh, now I can't remember where I got it. I don't recognize the uh, the tag. Oh, Fire Poppies. So it must have been when they were going out of business. Um, but I uh, hadn't stitched, I hadn't had anything to stitch on it for quite a while. So I was really happy to see that I think this was going to be a good mix. So that was a new start. And then Harriet Taylor, also by the this one's by, not also, but all, by the Scarlet House. Uh, Harriet Taylor, 1845. Love my uh, finishes. Uh, the finishes by Yvette Go and Carol Crago on Instagram are so inspiring, as well as seeing this in person at Tanya's house. And I'm using, oh gosh, let me think. What's the, oh, I should have it in here. Hold on, let me just tell you that. Vintage pecan butter, 40 count vintage pecan butter. And so far I am using the NPIs. I think I had a couple that I had to order. I didn't have, so I kind of skipped around a little bit, but they should be coming soon. And let's see, I, I placed a couple of orders, so I couldn't remember which one they came in, but um, I'm, I, th I told you I was gonna give you a report on what I thought about the NPIs, and I do enjoy the NPIs very much. They're very easy to stitch with. Um, I really, I recommend them and, and I will kit more things up with NPI uh, floss in the future. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Finishes, Madeline Deleuze, the name tag, ES, and all Susan's little sampler. So there you go. Those were all of my finishes for June. Hopefully, I is I don't think I forgot anything um, looking around me. So that should add up to, if you wanted to do the math, can't see how you could with all of that. It seemed a little bit chaotic. But those were all of my, uh, those are all my whips and all of my finishes for the mid-year of 2023. I did say I had a couple of 
um, purchases that I want to share with you. So my husband surprised me uh, one morning. I got up and checked my email and there was a gift card to 123Stitch. He said, I think you should have some happy mail for your birthday. So I was like, oh, okay. Immediately went on and tried. I had a very difficult time when you have a certain, you know, something like that and your wish list is long. You're like, okay, what do I want to narrow it down to? But uh, I did the Stacey Nash, um, what's this called? Velvet Parsnip Needle Book. It's just the chart. There's no actually supplies with it, but I just thought this was so cute. I'd really wanted it the whole time since it had come out. I've loved this one for a long time as well. So um, Cross Stitch Antiques, three Vs by MC. I, she stitches this on um, 40 count gray, the Zweigart base. I don't know if that's what I'm going to choose or not. And if this is kitted for or charted for NPIs and DMCs. So maybe this will be one that I will try some more N NPIs on. It's so pretty. As well as the Red Deer Sampler. I've, I've liked this one for a really, really, really long time. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm only stitching this middle flower right here. I just decided I'm, I'm just finally going to do it. I, I really don't want to take the time to stitch this border. As fabulous as it is. Stitching with Jane and Julie. Julie has a, an amazing finish on this. Uh, my friend Diane Woodpecker's daughter. I got to see her finish framed and on her wall in person. It's gorgeous. Um, but I'm just planning on stitching this portion here. So there's that. And then this was a bit of a surprise. Um, I've always liked it. I'm gonna move the flosses out of the way. I've always liked it, but it wasn't one. I, I'm noticing again that my chain, my, my, um, <clears throat> my style, not really my style is changing, but I'm just really getting drawn to um, these types of samplers. I really wanna stitch this whole thing. The Betrothed by GGR. Really, really pretty. Um, pretty colors. There's some, look at this tangerine. I got some of the called for flosses. That tangerine, that bright. There are two colorways charted on this. It took me a minute to figure out when I was looking at the, the list of flosses. There's the back, which is more bright. And then there's the front, which is more muted. And I'm going to do the muted colorway on the front because that's still pretty bright. But that's the antique there, the picture of that. So the betrothed. Are you stitching this? Are you going to stitch this? April has it. April, are you going to stitch this with me? So I am uh, going to have to the only thing that stops me from starting things is the getting up process. You know that's not my favorite, but I got to do it if I want to stitch all the things. And um, gosh, I'm loving all my new starts. So I'm just going to give myself permission to continue to stitch what I want, when I want, as I want. And there's no rush. I have plenty of things um, to still kit up and I have plenty of things that are on the go and I have plenty of things on my wall. So I'm just going to continue to enjoy um, my hobby. Uh, one more thing to show you a purchase. I saw this from Chelsea um, on Annie B's Folk Art. She mentioned this little light that she got off of Amazon. And so I popped over there. It's, it's not, it's like $10. And so I did get this one just the other day. I actually have it clipped right in front of me, shining <laughs> to hopefully help with some of the shadowing. And uh, I clip it to my Q-snap. It does clip to my Q-snap. Um, and it was, I'm able to pull it nice and close over my work. And it helps me because my husband doesn't like the bright lights on when he wants to watch TV, which I understand. So I thought this would give, give me something uh, lightweight that I can attach to my Q-snap and give it a whirl. So, so far I've, I've used it for a few days now and I really enjoy it. All right, let me take a moment and pause and think whether there was anything else that I had to share with you. I do not think that there is. That, that would be all the stitching that I have all the purchases that I have. Oh, I did have one more fun. Uh, I really quickly, I was given this little um, clock, uh, bird clock as a gift, and I'm not taking this out. I'm totally going to use this here in my room as my clock. I immediately stole the battery from the other one. And as well as I had a couple of really thoughtful, um, beautiful little, uh, my friend Deborah, who's the card maker, she always makes me a birthday card and she made me this. This was um, another friend, Lisa, sent me this card. It's She stitched this and then I think made the card from that. Just beautiful. Um, as well as um, Renee sent me a card. Thank you, friends. I got this beautiful little stitching bag. I don't usually show a lot of gifts, but I just wanted to share just really quickly a few things. This was stitched for me. Um, oh my gosh, just a special, I said so just, I've had a wonderful birthday. I, I've had a wonderful birthday. So, so incredibly blessed. 
Okay, no more tears, or there aren't gonna be tears. <laughs> We're just gonna go ahead and that is all the stitching. My husband, or perhaps the two of us, I don't know, he surprised me last time and said, hey, come share scripture with me. I said, okay, <laughs> maybe the both of us. We're gonna be sharing some scripture with you as always, and I hope that you'll stay. Um, but that's gonna be all the stitching. I'm wishing you all a very happy and safe uh, 4th of July. And I look forward to coming back with more stitching and a regular uh, floss tube episode in a couple of weeks. So everyone, take care. Thank you for staying and allowing me to share a few scriptures with you today on this 4th of July Independence Day. Kim asked me to share a few scriptures on what it means to be free uh, biblically, um, seeing that we are celebrating freedom here in our country today. Um, there's a couple of different uh, ideas of freedom in the New Testament, one being freedom from sin and death, uh, spiritual death, and the second being freedom from the law, the Old Testament law and all its regulations. So I'm going to share a few scriptures with you. Uh, the first is John uh, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, and it reads, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. A few verses down from there in verse 36, it says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So, you know, those verses are saying that, you know, true freedom comes um, from following Jesus Christ, putting our faith in Jesus Christ. He said in John 14, I am the way, I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So uh, those verses are just a wonderful, wonderful um, reminder that true freedom spiritually comes um, from you know putting our faith in Christ. And then it's cemented in Romans chapter eight. Paul writes in verses one and two. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And verse two is such a wonderful verse. Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. And the final verse I'm going to talk about is Galatians 5, verse 1, a very well-known verse. And it's speaking of uh, our freedom as Christians uh, that we are not tied to any regulations. We're not tied to the Old Testament law. Uh, we do have freedom in Christ. It says, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. So thank you again for allowing me to share these scriptures. Uh, I pray that you all have a safe, blessed, and happy 4th of July. And finally, I just want to say happy birthday to my, my best friend, uh, my beautiful wife. Uh, I love you and happy birthday.